Histograms are not complicated. They just require a little thought. But if you master histograms, your life as a photographer will be much easier. You'll be able to make better decisions when taking the pictures, and you'll be able to make quick work of the adjustments once you get those pictures on your computer. Nearly every adjustment you perform affects the blacks in your picture, but each of them does it in a different way. The only way to be able to fully understand what they are doing and how to make the right adjustments without going too far is to understand histograms. They will save you a lot of time too, both in learning what the adjustments do and in applying them to your picture. What's more, histograms can be used to give you much better results. This is a picture after cranking up the vibrancy as far as it'll go. About all we've succeeded in doing is making the cyan in the background more noticeable, which distracts from the leaves on the left. In just a few seconds time, using histograms, I was able to make the picture look like this, and I did so without altering any of the colors in the original image. The original has a variety of colors between green and yellow, yellow and red, red and magenta, etc. My approach preserves all those colors. Hopefully that supplies you with enough motivation to learn about histograms. When you navigate to the Adjustments and Enhancements section of your photo software, you'll most always see a histogram presented in a very prominent place. If you don't, you need to refer to your software's help system to determine how to view a histogram for your pictures. The reason it is displayed so prominently is because it is such a fundamentally powerful tool for adjusting your pictures. But it doesn't do a bit of good if you don't know how to read it. Imagine this were an extreme close-up of a portion of an eye in black and white. This is the edge of the pupil, this is the iris, and then we're heading out to the white of the eye. Each one of the squares is going to represent a single pixel. What we're going to do is build a histogram for this little portion of the image. We take all the black pixels and stack them to the far left. Then we take those pixels that are nearly black and stack them up. We will continue to do this, stacking ever lighter pixels together, until finally we have the white pixel on the right. The histogram for this image would look like what you see here. Regardless of how those pixels are arranged in the picture, the histogram doesn't change. It just stacks them up from darkest to lightest. Here is a black and white image of a glass window. Let's break it up into sections and see what the histograms would look like. The lower right corner is almost all black, or nearly black. The histogram shows this by the large number of pixels making a spike on the left-hand side. The upper right corner of the image has a band of medium gray in it. The histogram has a second hump representing those grays. The medium grays are not all the same shade, so they don't stack up on top of each other exactly. That is why the hump is more spread out. The middle pane is kind of the opposite. It has very little dark gray and has more light gray. The histogram is missing the spike of dark on the left hand side and instead has a hump on the right for the lighter grays. If we look at the whole image, there is a lot of nearly black and then there's a fairly even amount of dark and light grays. The histogram shows all the grays are represented in nearly equal parts. Then there is this one spike of nearly white in the picture. This is caused by the grout between the panes. Because all of the grout is the same color, there are a lot of pixels that are stacked up on top of each other, all that one shade of gray. Now let's look at this picture of leaves. The color can fool your eyes a bit, so I'll just convert it to black and white. If we were to break this up into little blocks and stack them up on top of each other in their various tones of gray, 
the histogram would look like this. Now if we remember that the picture has millions of tiny pixels and thousands of shades of gray, you end up with a histogram that looks a lot smoother. The histogram doesn't actually show the shades of gray like I did, so you just have to remember that the black is on the left and the white is on the right. Even if we place the color back on top of the gray background, the histogram for the picture doesn't change. It only looks at the black and the white. Let's look at another picture. What do you think the histogram for this would look like? The leafy areas are nearly the same as the previous picture, so I'd expect the same shape in the middle of the histogram but I have a big area of very light gray or nearly white, so I would expect there to be a spike on the right-hand side where the whites are. Lo and behold, the histogram shows a hump in the middle for the grays and a spike for the whites. The reason the hump isn't quite as large as the previous picture is because there aren't as many middle gray pixels to stack up. One-third of the picture is nearly white. This side-by-side -side comparison shows the same thing. The shades of the leaves in both of these pictures are nearly identical. The big difference is that the picture on the left has whitish sky that creates a spike in the histogram near the right side. You may or may not have noticed, but the humps of gray in all of these pictures are never really in the middle because the camera forces this. The camera calculates the exposure in a way that guarantees that the average shade is going to be slightly to the left of the middle of the histogram, somewhere around 40%. If we go back to the original leaf picture, you see that it has a similar hump in the middle grays. The camera is a bit conservative on the dark side, so it measures its exposure so that the middle of the hump, again, is slightly to the left of the middle of the histogram. When we make adjustments, one of our goals is to get the main features in the picture to around that 50% mark in the histogram. Our second goal is to make sure that the picture has true blacks and whites in it. This is called contrast. If you don't have any true blacks in your picture or any true whites in your picture, then your picture tends to look a little bland. If you can expand the histogram so that you have everything from true white to black in your picture, the contrast of the black and the white gives you a richness that pure color changes can't provide. In essence, we simply are going to try to shift the midpoint to the right a touch and stretch the histogram sideways so that the dark gets darker and the light gets lighter in reasonable proportions. When we do that, we can instantly make a picture look more vibrant without affecting the colors or the balance of light to dark. It's a little bit like turning up the volume on your stereo. You don't change any of the pitches in the music, and the quiet parts of the music are still quieter than the loud parts. We just make everything more noticeable by making it louder. Every image adjustment modifies the histogram differently. By using different adjustments in combination, you can turn up the volume on your pictures in a very controlled and predictable way. Not all adjustments are created equal, so I'm going to go through each of them and show you how they affect the histogram.